I got food up in the fridge Y'all keep looking for that new way I think I like it how it is Cold pizza on a Tuesday I got food up in the fridge Y'all keep looking for a new wave I think I like it how it is My shoe strings untied I'm running full speed With scissors in hand I love pointy things Let's fall on the floor Next to all of our needs Let's lose inhibition Let's fly like our dreams Is reality and Real things ain't quite what they seem Once you hold it, does it gleam? If it's green, is there a soul? Is a soul a real thing? If you're really in the know Is it all a scripted show With the cameras and lights And the laugh track To kill all of my loneliness inside And a cast and crew of friends Who always there when things get dry to crack a joke But instead I'm here in Cali Up in smoke in real life Where the whole world broke And the pizza always froze But it's all good This is all I'll ever know So I better chow down While the food straight snow Make my own damn and wave since I'm my own studio taking life for what it is even if it's getting Cold pizza on a Tuesday I got food up in the fridge Y'all keep looking for a new way I think I like it how it is Daniel Madison, welcome back. Thanks for choosing to spend a bit more time with me and Charlie today. We both really appreciate it. That's right, Charlie. Thanks. In today's video, I'm going to teach you my all time favorite flourish. This is Twisted Ring. It is my go to, my number one flourish of all time. And when you execute and achieve this flourish, the deck is still in the same order that it was in before you started the flourish. There isn't a flourishing sequence that I have performed that hasn't included Twisted Rain. It's the number one requested tutorial. So here we are, I'm gonna teach you everything I know about it. I've taught it a few times, it's over 20 years old. First taught it in the Lethal Project, then it went in Dangerous, and then I taught it in the Car Destroy Project with Illusionist. This flourish looks difficult and complicated, I assure you, it is not. Get yourself a deck of playing cards. I'm Daniel Madison, and this is Twisted Rain. So I hold the deck in my right hand, and bear in mind I'm right handed. My thumb is at the very bottom of the deck, finger two is at the very top. Finger one is going to break the deck in half like so. I'm going to pull this packet into finger two. This allows my finger to slide down to the very end. My left hand turns palm towards the audience and finger one presses up on that top packet, causing it to split in half like so. I'm gonna swing that around away from the deck and my pinky's gonna make contact with the other side of it. As this happens, my thumb connects with the middle packet, the corner of the middle packet, and I start to stretch outwards. Now I can allow that top packet to fall into my left hand as I bring that middle packet back to my thumb. Notice the position of my hand right now. My pinky, my left pinky, is towards the back of the deck pointing upwardly. So I make it connect with the middle packet at the very corner here. Now I'm gonna rotate, I'm gonna pivot and rotate that middle packet away from my right hand, causing it to spin all the way around my pinky until it's into my left hand. I'm gonna stop that packet from closing with my thumb. With my right hand, I'm gonna execute a one-handed fan. So if I hold the packet like this, thumb goes down here and fingers two and three press against the bottom. Notice that my thumb is at the bottom corner. Now when I press, let go with fingers one and four and then just spread my thumb across. This causes a one-handed fan, very simple one-handed fan. As I'm doing this, my left hand is going to execute a revolution cut. Finger one goes to the middle here. Finger three <laughs> clears the edge of the deck as the thumb goes towards the pinky like so. 
Finger three is gonna reach around to the other side of that packet and I'm gonna reach up as far as I can with that finger. Now I'm gonna let go with my thumb and allow fingers one and three to spin that packet. Finger one goes underneath the packet like this. The fan is gonna go in between those two packets and it's gonna take away that top packet in this position, balancing on top of the fan. My left hand now makes its way over to the other side so my arms cross. My right hand is gonna flip this packet so it's gonna do a complete flip. Let's zoom out for this part. So here, to here. Now look at the position of my hands. The, the fan is still on this side. I have a complete packet over here and my thumb is extended. My left thumb is extended. So I'm gonna close the fan on the back of my thumb. Then I'm gonna continue and rotate this packet around over like this, completely over. Look at the position of my hand. Finger one is going to extend so that bottom packet can come out and connect with my right hand like so. I'm gonna allow it to fully extend like this and I'm gonna turn my hand face down. I now take this packet and I fold it onto the back of my hand like so. Let me just adjust this camera. So it's now folded onto the back of my hand. I'm now in a perfect position to ribbon spread this packet across the back of my hand onto my arm like this. Now from this position, this is another dangerous part of this flourish that feels very satisfying when you hit it. I'm now gonna throw this packet into the air. The entire ribbon spread's gonna go into the air. It sounds difficult when I'm explaining it, but, but it's not. It's one of those things you have to try to realize that actually this works quite well. So I'm gonna throw the entire packet up. Now I need to throw it in a way that's gonna make it turn over, turn face down. So my hand is gonna go higher than my arm. What I mean by that is I need this packet to go up like this and then down in a line like this. This is a part of the flourish that you're probably going to be best practicing isolated away from the rest of the flourish. Just try this. Spread the deck along the back of your arm and then throw your arm up like this. Not all the way, don't go all the way around, just up like this. If you throw it too far, you're just going to yeet it all over that side and you're going to drop all the cards. It's just a little flip into the air and then you can catch all the playing cards as a one and you'll find that gravity does most of the work it pulls all those playing cards together and of course make sure you don't have long sleeves on when you're practicing this so to look at that move isolated once more if i do a thumb roll which is finger one here break the deck in half pull it up around my thumb my thumb's going to curl inside so i can roll that packet around so a thumb roll looks like this Thumb roll usually just stops on top here. I like to extend that bottom packet to this point so that it comes out and then on top. So thumb roll, extend the bottom packet, left hand face down, right hand face up. Take that packet, fold it around your fingers, spread that deck across the back, that packet across the back of your hand, and now throw it into the air catch it. Let's look at the whole sequence slowed down a little bit so you can see exactly where everything goes. So I break finger one, pull my finger down to the end, break again here, swing, my thumb connects with the back, pinky connects with the end of this packet, extend, bring that middle packet back to your thumb, let this packet fall into your hand, pinky's pointing upwards so we connect with the back of the now top packet and I'm gonna rotate it all the way around my pinky like this and don't let it fall into your hand because I'm gonna catch it on my thumb. As I do a one-handed fan in this hand, I start a revolution cut in my left hand. The fan goes inside, catching that top packet. The lower packet is brought over here as I cross my hand. I throw this packet on top of the fan and I'm gonna catch it on top of this packet like so. The thumb now helps me close the fan. This turns into a thumb roll. If I extend the bottom packet, left hand face down, right hand face up, fold that packet onto the back of my hand, spread it along my arm, wait for a moment, and then throw this in the air and catch everything. And that is a complete twisted brain. The twisted brain will not affect the order of the deck. 
cardistry of flourishing is such a wonderful, beautiful, graceful thing to watch. And I think one thing that ruins that in most cases is speed. When the cardist, when the person demonstrating flourishing goes too fast, it kind of ruins it and you don't get to follow along properly and appreciate exactly what's happening. So my advice has always been don't rush, don't go too fast, slow down just enough for us to see how truly beautiful cardistry really is. The playing cards really are dancing in the cardist's tongues, they really are, it's a dance. So if we incorporate this, if we put that into our spirit, into our personality, into our body, our body language when we are flourishing, we can make it look even more beautiful. It's a simple, simple trick that makes the cardistry move, makes the flourish look so much more beautiful than it actually does. In many cases, it's sad to see flourishes and, and cardists doing their incredible work, but not moving their body, just moving their hands and their arms. If they added some body language and some freedom, if they give themselves freedom to move around as much with themselves as they do with the cards, they could create something so much more beautiful than just playing cards and moving around in your hand. I tried to do this with all my flourishes I have since day one. My early flourish videos were more like dance videos, me dancing. I love dancing, I love my freedom, I love to move around. So if I can do that while I'm holding the playing cards, it's gonna make the playing cards seem to come to life so much more. The way that we can incorporate this, bring this into a flourish like Twisted Rain is by taking advantage of the direction of the packets. In, in this flourish, my arms cross over over. So there's a big body movement going on. There's playing cards going in the air. There's a big fan. And if we just pay attention to where our audience is or where the camera is, then we can make it look so much more special. I found that filming uh, Twisted Rain over the years, there were a few times where you couldn't really appreciate the fun because I did it at the wrong angle for the camera or you couldn't see how high or how graceful that throw looks when the playing cards are spread you throw them in the air. I call that malice by the way, it's a separate flourish, it's just this, and uh, you can call that malice, so it's just a way of ending Twisted Brain, but if the camera angles are wrong or if people aren't looking at this correctly from the right point of view, then they don't get to appreciate the true beauty of it, and that's our responsibility, not theirs, it's not up to them to decide how beautiful it is if we've demonstrated it wrong. So, to so to express this in a way that might make more sense is to just show you what I mean by teaching this very quickly. Once again, we'll teach you to rain with all the body movements and the body language that I like to put into it. So the first part where my right hand is doing all the work, it's not much of a movement. It doesn't feel much of a movement, but at the end, when you put all these movements together, it'll look like a lot more is going on. This arm, I pull it up here, so I bring it up. And when I swing that packet, I twist my wrist as well, so it looks like a bigger move. Now when I pull that packet back on finger two, I kick back, the, the wrist moves once again. When my hand comes over, I make sure my fingers are all, are all spread and make sure my, my hand, my arm's moving in quite a big way. Now when I go up here to break this packet, my fingers are wide open until they have to close at this point. This movement here, is like a back forward movement that arguably doesn't need to even be a part of this flourish when you break it down. But it's an opportunity for me to do another movement to, uh, with my body, with my arm, like this. And then, so I go over here a bit and then I come back a little bit. My hand twists like this in and I move over to this side and wherever I feel the packets being pulled, I'll turn my body with that. Now bear in mind, I've got to try and keep myself in frame but I'll always turn in a way that benefits the audience so that it looks pretty on my digital theatre. <laughs> Beautiful! So from this part here, now when I'm here and this packet's back, my pinky's got to connect with this top packet. So I make a big movement out of this. I turn my wrists all the way here. Now when I spin this packet, it looks like a much bigger spin than what it is. And notice my body's following that packet around. So I'm from here, my body comes all the way over here. Now when I fan this packet, I don't just fan it, I fan it and put it across my body like this, so that it can be seen, so I can make sure the camera can see, yeah, that's a big fun. One of the mistakes I made um, in many videos is to fan like this, and the camera can't really even see a fan from this point. Now, because my arms are crossed and they need to be uncrossed, when I do the revolution, I, I pull it back here towards my body. Now I spin, when it spins, I come over this side, and now my arms cross again and I go inside with some kind of energy and instead of just going across my arm it makes kind of a circle motion and I try and get that packet 
pretty high without causing too many problems. So I try and get it high and I notice that I don't ever rush that part. It needs to be beautiful, it needs to be graceful, it needs to be appreciated, so I don't rush it. Once I'm here, I make sure my arms are a little bit more crossed than they actually need to be. And the thumb roll, when I'm closing the thumb, closing the fan on the back of the thumb, it doesn't need to be as big as I make it, but I make a big deal out of it. So I hit the back of my thumb and this arm goes all over like this. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but I am consciously aware that I'm making my arm do this more than it needs to because it makes everything else look bigger. So I do the move. Now, when I'm over here, because this packet's moving this way, so does my body. Now when the packet underneath goes this way, so does my body, like this. Now I turn everything. And when I spread this on the back of my arm, I make sure I try and make a, a I try and make it look as big as possible, like if I move my arm, there's so much movement going on in my arms. And then this part is a display, so I don't want to rush it. I don't want to just put it on the back of my arm and close it. Sometimes I will. It depends on the video, but if you're performing this for people, then you want to get to this point and pause so that they can appreciate and see what's going on. Just for a moment, just for a beat. You'll find that you've got a few seconds before the card starts slipping around. So here, here. And then in this position, I know that when I throw this packet up, it's going to land where the King of Diamonds is because all I'm doing is making this ribbon stand up. So I know it's going to land here. So when I throw this in the air, I've just got to be consciously aware that I'm bringing this packet to about here. One final note before we do a silent recap. And this part where I'm taking that first top packet around into my hand, when you see me do this, you're going to see me clip it between fingers one and three rather than one of my pinky. Now, this is simply because I've stretched my hands beyond reach, beyond a point where they should be able to stretch. And I'm very aware that not everybody is going to have as stretchy fingers as me. That's why I always teach it using the pinky at this part at this part here. When I'm doing it, if you if you pay attention, if you watch closely, you'll see that it's always number three for me. So I'm gonna do a silent recap. And during my recap, I'm gonna actually use finger three. There might be some people out there who do have that stretch and might find this a tiny little bit of information quite valuable. So here's a silent recap of Twisted Ring. was Twisted Rain. I hope you like it. I hope you learn it. I hope you use it. If you do and you put it on the socials, stick a hashtag on there, Daniel Madison, so I can check it out. Perhaps give you a little bit of feedback. I'll be back very soon to teach you some variations and some different ideas, different ways of closing Twisted Rain. And I'm also getting ready to review all of the entries for the Mad Sling Shot. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out the hashtag tag my sling shot check out all the videos are amazing and i can't wait to share them all with you stay close i'll be back soon this was twisted rain i am donald madison i'll see you next time